Things that I really talked about in the transatlantic slave trade are why Africans got into slavery, why Africans sold Africans into slavery and story of some African slave traders. Some people will say it's false to say Africans sold slaves then. By trying to cover the bitter truth, I can say African history is losing one of its purpose, which is to prevent reoccurrence of undesired events. Because not only does Africans sell Africans as slaves, but freed slaves also sold slaves to their former masters. While I try to keep this video short, I will talk about these topics. Story of African slave traders, why Africans sold Africans into slavery, how Africans still sell Africans into slavery in 2022. Seriki Abbas Williams born as Ifarem Lekun Fagbemi, was taken as slave in West Africa and was later sold and taken to Brazil by another slave trader called Mr. Williams, from whom he got the name Williams. After some years, he was allowed to return to Nigeria on the condition of getting slaves and selling them to Mr. Williams, his former slave master. When Seriki returned to Lagos, he became a slave merchant. He maintained contact with his Brazilian master and shipped African men and women abroad as slaves. Seriki shipped slaves into the Americas for cash and kinds. Aside of money, he also got mirrors, bottles of alcoholic wine, and umbrella as reward. He said that during his time, he traded 10 slaves for a bottle of wine. 40 slaves for an umbrella and 100 slaves for one cannon gun. He later became so wealthy that the Muslim community elected him as the Asiriki and he built the Badagri Central Mosque in 1896. He had 128 wives and 144 children at the time he died. The cell where he once bounded and stalked slaves has been converted to living rooms. His old house is now a museum in Badagri called Brazilian Barracoon of Slaves. What I call the legend of Uwaubani Ogugu is the story of a slave trader whose exploit was made known to the public through a very intriguing biography of his by her great granddaughter. The story is a long one, but here are the highlights. He gained power and wealth by selling other humans across the Atlantic. He has a slave trading license from the Royal Niger Company. He was so rich and influential that community leaders had to give him their daughters to win his favor and colonial masters made him chief and local judge. When he died, a leopard was killed instead of a cow and six slaves were buried alive with him. Many years after his death, his grandson was recognized by the Anglican Church because he helped to spread the gospel in his region. Prior to the white and Arab intrusion of our continent, people become a slave for many reasons, most especially if captured as a prisoner of war. Their status means they only do what their owner says and no property. The East regularly run errands, fight for their masters, and work as a twin deal. They do not suffer harsh treatment in general, and those that suffer harsh treatment can be said to have had a bad master, just as one could have a bad boss today. In an example of the famous Evan Shetwani Ura biography, a rich slave owner, one of many excuses her enemies gave in order to kill her was that she was too harsh. To our slave workers. This is enough to say that an average African society had a sense of humanity for slaves and were not harsh to them. So one of the reasons we can deduct from this is that it was a tradition to enslave people or exchange them for goods. Foreign slave traders seem to have better things to offer in the trade. For example, aside of money, cannon guns and other weapons that can be used to subdue other local tribes, rule them and get more slaves. It's important to know that there are lots of wars going on on the continent at that time, so getting these weapons are necessary for them. 
Also, being an ally to the slave traders makes an African community to be considered strong. In an example, Queen Nziga of Ndugu, who spent all her life as a queen fighting the Portuguese slave traders, had once agreed to allow the Portuguese trade slaves in her environment on the condition of them being an ally and supplying her kingdom some weapons. So that changed the market and led to kidnappings and more war on the continent to meet the high demand for slaves. Having resources that can be exported out of the continent is a source of wealth during the time. Farm produce such as rubber, palm oil were a source of wealth through foreign exchange for the farmers and for the warriors is the spoil of war, the captives. They shared the captives among themselves. It is said that most wars of that time are motivated by the desire to get slaves as a means of wealth. And then also at the beginning, other races become slaves too, but the other shifted when it was discovered that people of that race are ready to sell themselves cheaply and they are also strong people and can survive harsh conditions. Treatment of slaves across the Atlantic Ocean was inhuman. Most slave traders do not know this. Seriki of Lagos, who came back from being a slave to sell slaves, was lucky to have received the favor of his master, who even taught him many things, including reading, writing in Dutch, English, and Portuguese, and Spanish. Queen Unziga, at a point, agreed to trade slaves with the Portuguese, but later spent most of her life fighting against the Portuguese and slave traders while her brother committed suicide when they see what they are doing. In conclusion, people do say enslaved Africans. If it's to be then, it's just enslaved people. The thing is, there was no Africa then. You are only conscious of your immediate community. No African society sees other parts of them until they started learning about the rest of the world. So, there was no African consciousness and also they lived their time, the era of slavery. Today, I see Africans putting all the blames on other races and some even made a video like this, who claim it's a lie that Africans sold Africans as slaves. Covering up the mistakes of the past and shifting focus on the slave buyers will just be a waste of time because as long as there are people who are willing to stretch their neighbors and sell them as slaves, buying it is just an easy job. Today, Africans are still being sold out in what is called modern slavery within the continent and outside the continent.